Hey everyone, welcome to another taste test video. In this video, I've got a lot of variety. So we're gonna be making a homemade bread using a bread mix that is a no-need bread. I was really excited about that one. We've also got some snacks, some desserts, and my family even chimed in and gave their opinions too. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and that it gives you lots of good ideas. Thank you to Thrive Market for teaming up with me and let's get started. First thing we're gonna start out with is this bread mix. I saw this bread mix on Thrive and it said no need. So you don't have to knead it and it only has to rise for 30 minutes. So basically what's inside the bag is the dry ingredients and then you just add the wet ingredients. So you just dump this out into a big bowl and it says to add two tablespoons of oil and two and a quarter cups of slightly warm water. The warm water is to help activate the yeast. It does say that it is optional to add one to two tablespoons of sugar. This helps to add flavor obviously, but also also helps to encourage browning and that caramelization to give it a nice beautiful crust then I just mix this all together and what I loved is that you can just do it with a hand mixer you don't have to knead it you don't have to have a bread hook so I was like sold let's try that then it says to just transfer it to an oiled loaf pan I was really nervous about this I thought it was gonna be really sticky and hard to work with but I would say the dough is kind of somewhere between a thick cake batter and a bread dough so it's actually pretty easy to work with then it says to brush the top of the loaf with oil egg or aquafaba. I decided to try aquafaba because there's actually a note that says that if you try it you'll love it so I was like okay why not so I just used some of that on top then it says to let rise for 30 to 40 minutes I did 35 minutes and it actually did rise a little bit not like double in size or anything but it got a little bit taller then I put it in a 450 degree oven for exactly 45 minutes and it said that if you knock on it it should sound hollow jelly. It kind of just tastes like a standard white sandwich bread. I feel like you could use it for sweet or savory. It's very neutral, but it's not bland. It has flavor. I think because of the sugar and the salt, I think that really does help. I could even add maybe more sugar next time, but that does give it a little bit of flavor, so I wouldn't recommend skipping that. The outside has a nice golden brown crust, and it got really even and golden all the way around, which was nice. I think I could have baked it for five minutes longer. I don't think it tastes gluten-free either. Like texturally, it's not like, oh, this is gluten-free bread. It's very similar. So much easier than making bread from scratch, but still a very kind of like cozy, homey baking project if you're looking for something like that. So I would definitely buy this again. I think this was really fun to try and pretty good. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna try are these Fit Joy vegan white cheddar pretzels. I really, really loved the Dijon flavor that I tried recently, so I'm, I have high hopes for this one. I also noticed that these are gluten-free and allergen-friendly. They smell like white cheddar popcorn and nutritional yeast. The first thing I noticed before I even got the flavor was I noticed how crunchy they were. They're like very crunchy pretzels. I'm having deja vu. I feel like I said that when I tried the Dijon flavor as well because it sounds weird. Like obviously pretzels are crunchy, but these are particularly crunchy pretzels. The white cheddar flavor is really nice and it tastes a lot like the hippies white cheddar puffs. So if you've had those before, that exact white cheddar flavor is pretty much what I'm getting here. I think it could have a little bit more coating. Like it is, it is good. But I feel like it could have more of the white cheddar and it could be a touch saltier. Next, I have Bob's Red Mill Oat Crackers. It says thin and crispy and I got the classic flavor. There were a few different flavors on Thrive that I saw, but it says they're plant-based and made with whole grain oats and they are also gluten-free. I'm not gluten-free, but apparently a lot of the snacks I gravitate towards are. So they kind of look like wheat thins, like big wheat. Oh, they're like very similar looking. It's like a larger wheat thin. It even kind of smells like a wheat thin. You know how when you open a box of wheat thins, it's like a very specific smell? This is giving me that. This is giving me wheat thin vibes. The texture is amazing. These taste a lot like wheat thins. They're, they don't have that immediate like salty impact that wheat thins have and I really love that. I don't think they're salty enough, but they're very good. Like texturally, very satisfying. They have that kind of whole wheat savory but like slightly sweet flavor that wheat thins have so i would say they're a very good like gluten-free alternative made with much better ingredients as well these are very good though i would definitely buy these again 100 percent. these are bob's red mill oat crackers the thing with bob 
is like <laughs> these are good no but like i would eat a lot of these but they're definitely like you need a dip with these or like a shrimp. that's exactly what i said yeah. i would think hummus it would be good with hummus yeah it would be good but by themselves no they're not the kind they of need more salt if you're gonna eat them on their own they need more salt wow we are so related i said the same <laughs> thing for all of these if you're looking to just have them on their own, not salty enough. If you're going to use them as a dip, completely, perfectly salty enough and a good size, a better size even than wheat thins. No, but I don't think they need more salt because they're not something I would eat out of the bag. Or I just in a but bowl I like eat this. wheat thins out of the bag. Them out of the bag. Do you eat wheat thins out of the bag? Yeah, they slap. So do I. They slap. I wouldn't eat these out of the bag. I would put them out with, with hummus or an interesting dip. With something else they're good. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things to get on Thrive is olives, and they have a pretty good selection, but these in particular are my all-time favorite. They remind me of when I was in Italy because whether we were in the city in Rome or when we were in Capri, I was there for my friend's wedding, and she got married in Capri, and there were all of these amazing little outdoor cafes where you could just sit outside. It was May, and so it was sunny and beautiful. Everyone was drinking Aperol Spritz, and so you would have like Aperol Spritz or a little drink, and there would be little bowls of snacks, and it was either like a mix of potato chips or nuts, and then olives, and it was these green olives, and they were so good. But I used to shy away from getting the kinds that aren't pitted even though the pitted option is usually more expensive but I was on TikTok recently and I came across a video from Daphne Oz and she showed a really easy way to get the pit out and kind of create like a rustic look so all you do is you take the olive and you put it on a cutting board and then you just kind of smash it the same way that you do when you're peeling garlic and it basically makes it very easy for you just to kind of remove the seed and then you're left with an olive that's kind of crushed rather than chopped and they actually look really pretty in a salad like if you have sort of a Mediterranean style salad or a panzanella salad you have this rough chop versus like a perfect slice and it looks really pretty and it's so effortless and easy so I thought that was such a cool hack I wanted to show you because now that I know how to do that I always just get the kinds that have the the pit in them because it's so easy to remove and you do save a little bit of money that way so these are amazing this brand also has a really yummy tapenade selection and most of them i believe are vegan friendly if not all of them so double check but yeah this is this is high up on my list of favorites everything in this video is from thrive market and even though you can find a lot of these brands at your local grocery store i find that i always save money and time when i get them on thrive plus it's a much more planet friendly option the way i do it is i first start with my basics so i generally have a list of my staples that i'm always loading up on that i like to make sure i have on hand so i'll go to the buy again option on thrivemarket.com and that has all the stuff that i've bought before and that is generally my basics all the stuff that i know that i'm gonna need so i'll go through that and get everything i need but then since i'm in the comfort of my own home and I don't feel that rush and that pressure of you know like I got to get in and I got to get out I will take a little bit of time to find some new stuff and that's how I found so many cool new vegan products because there's so many coming out all the time which I love and I think is really exciting for team vegan but it's a lot and sometimes I miss it because I'm at the grocery store I have my list I have my blinders on like I said I'm trying to get in and out and I don't really see all the new stuff that they have to offer so what I do when I'm on Thrive is I will click the vegan filter everything that's not vegan just magically disappears and then I will go to see what's new or I'll go to snacks or sauces or dips or whatever chocolate is one of my favorite sections they have a chocolate and candy section hit the vegan filter and I find so much cool stuff that I just kind of miss when I'm shopping in person if you want to try Thrive Market you can click the link in the description box below and sign up to become a member for either one month or for one year whatever you prefer and when you use my link in the description box below that will get you 40% off your first order and a free gift worth up to $50. I really hope you guys enjoy shopping on Thrive as much as I do and now let's get back to the taste test. Okay, it is lunchtime right now and I thought it would be a good time to try the cauliflower quick dip. It's a Peruvian vegetable ceviche and it comes with two different compartments. It has the cauliflower, it looks like cauliflower rice in the bottom and then on top it's like lima beans, tomatoes, corn and it says you just remove the lids, mix and enjoy. It says it's fully cooked so you can enjoy it at room temperature, steamed or hot. I'm just gonna try it as is. I would imagine like if you're traveling or if you need something to bring to work or whatever, you don't don't have access to a refrigerator this could be like a pretty convenient and healthy option I definitely see why they call it ceviche I think the sweetness of the corn 
the freshness and the acidity of the tomato and then the lime juice with the spices like there is something that's kind of reminiscent of a ceviche i think this would be much better if you scooped it up with some tortilla chips and if you had some like chunks of avocado on top like if you just kind of roughly chopped an avocado and then you scooped all of this up with tortilla chips i think it would actually be pretty good on its own it's a little like mushy and soft and just texturally i don't think i would enjoy eating like a whole container of this but i love that it has wholesome ingredients it's super convenient and simple and it's very like easy Artichokes are one of my favorite vegetables, but I've never really loved canned artichoke hearts because those leaves that are attached to the heart can be very hit or miss. I feel like every third bite ends up having like a weird fibrous texture and it's just not enjoyable. Like I love the flavor and especially if it's marinated with other things, like I think they're super delicious, but the texture, that kind of stringy texture always throws me off. But then I saw these artichoke delights, artichoke hearts in water, and it just has mostly the actual heart, which I think is the best part of the artichoke. It's like the part that is the most meaty and delicious. And it has just those very like tender, base leaves and I really like that they are just preserved in water so you can really use these for a lot of things it says it's ideal for cooking so if you were making like an artichoke pasta if you wanted to make an artichoke dip you could roast these in a pan with garlic some olive oil some dried herbs I cannot wait to put this on a pizza like with mushrooms and olives and stuff I think that would be so good it really just tastes like an under seasoned canned artichoke like it basically exactly what it is but texturally it's really good because it's just uniform all throughout and you're not getting those like stringy bits and so i think this would be ideal for cooking like it said really cool ingredient but not like a snack for me okay next up i have the reharvest provisions superfood smoothie pops and this is the berry glow flavor it says that it's made with whole fruits and veggies and it's like one of those you know freezy pops that you just kind of push up the ingredients are strawberry cherry blueberry date spinach goji berries zucchini citric acid beets lemon and rosehip powder so these don't come frozen when you order them on thrive you just put them in the freezer when they arrive it kind of tastes like a frozen smoothie like i was expecting more of like a popsicle icicle texture but it's more of like a frozen puree popsicles are usually frozen juice so they're more of like an icy kind of light texture whereas this is like a frozen soft puree and there is some texture to it like it's not totally smooth so it kind of throws you off because you're expecting a popsicle and a popsicle is like juicy and icy and this is like Thicker. It's tart. It's not too sweet at all and it tastes like exactly what it is It tastes like cherries and blueberries and lemon and you don't taste the spinach or the zucchini But there is like a grittiness to it So I think if you know going into it that it's like a healthy alternative It could be super enjoyable, but if you're expecting a popsicle, I don't think you would like it Does that make sense? Like I have my treats and then I have my like healthy alternative treats and I like both but they're like in totally separate categories in my mind and so I would have that if it was like mm, I just want a little something but I still want to feel really good afterwards I want something kind of light and you know wholesome and nourishing I would reach for that over a popsicle but if I was like really craving a popsicle I would just have a popsicle granola butter I have been wanting to try granola butter for such a long time. It says it's the world's first oat-based spread and it's made with gluten-free oats. It does have, you know, cardamom and ginger and cinnamon and allspice, so I think it's gonna taste a little bit like, almost like a cookie butter, I think. Oh, it smells so good. It smells like, a little bit like Biscoff cookies, a little bit like gingerbread cookies and a little bit like graham crackers. The texture is like actually a little bit gritty. Like it's super smooth and silky like and stirrable, but then when you actually get up close, there's lots of like fine little gritty granules. I have a feeling this is gonna be incredible on pancakes, waffles, strawberries. I think the flavor is my favorite part. The flavor I like better than the texture. The flavor tastes like Christmas cookies in the best way. It's such a nice nostalgic flavor. 
And I think this would be great for baking or if you were making like milkshakes or something, so good. You could like drizzle this in the glass and then pour your milkshake into it and put some whipped cream on top. It's not as sweet as cookie butter either, which I think is important to note. I think I prefer the texture of cookie butter a little bit better because it's so smooth and decadent. And this has a little bit of grit to it. They have other flavors as well. So let me know if you've tried the other flavors and if you have a favorite. I also got a free gift with my order this time. And so I selected these hippies love hippies and I know I've had this flavor but it's been years I usually go for the white cheddar I love how thick hippies are there's a lot of different puffs out on the market and I like a lot of them but hippies are just so pleasant like the texture is so pleasant this is a really good barbecue it's like a kind of mesquite smoky sweet barbecue it reminds me a little bit of Lay's barbecue chips like the really classic kind of smoky barbecue flavor that's on the sweeter side that is this. I find that barbecue is usually one of my favorite flavors for snacks like this. Even like barbecue, like dried chickpea snacks and stuff, like barbecue is always a winner for me. The hippies were definitely my number one favorite, but I also loved the bread mix, the olives, and the granola butter. And I can confirm the granola butter is absolutely delicious on pancakes with banana slices and some berries totally recommend. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel if you're not already subscribed and check out the description box below to try Thrive Market to become a member today. I hope you guys have a really good day and I will see you in a video very soon. Bye everyone.